Hello everyone, Jackie Jones. Um, this is module two of lecture four, all about client interviewing. So this lecture is actually going to look at parts one to three of an interview structure that we're introducing you to as you are preparing to go into the legal profession. So an interview structure is a very useful tool, particularly when you start and you haven't experienced interviewing clients before. Bear in mind that everyone is going to have their own style and when you first go into practice, what inevitably happens is that you will observe various solicitors, interview clients. Some of you may already be in a situation where you have sat in on interviews and you've seen um, solicitors deal with clients, um, either whether it's a first interview or further down the track in their matter. And one of the things I'd have to say to you is that your style is dependent upon you as a person and your style will also change as you develop as a lawyer and gain more experience. So how I interview a client now is certainly different to how I interviewed a client when I first went into practice. There are certain similarities in the sense that I still have a structured approach but I probably am more confident in spending a little bit of time at the beginning just getting to know a client um, and being able to develop and expand that information that a client gives you. So why do we need to talk to you about an interview structure? Well, it really is just giving you a framework of where to start. It's not the be all and end all, but you will find that most lawyers will have a pro forma structure that they become familiar with. And that might go through the process, for example, of initially making a client feel comfortable obtaining all relevant facts and then allowing the client to talk. So even though um, this is a specific structure, it is one that I certainly from my experience is um, used by lawyers um, on a day-to-day -day basis as a tool to not only initially establishing a relationship with the client but obtaining the necessary information for the matter. So let's a look at the structure itself. So there are five components to the structure. The first is the opening. Secondly, obtaining the story. That then feeds into the theory development and strategy. And it's only once you've been able to obtain the story develop the theory and have an idea of the strategies and the client's perception of the problem that you're able to then generate options with the client and don't forget always it is their matter and it's their decision we're there to provide information give them the knowledge that they need to be able to make decisions and then conclusion and homework. I always think it's essential that you, you need to establish that relationship early with that client in that first snapshot when they come to see you so they feel confident with you then you've got that whole middle part of the interview and then again so important that that end bit that client walks out of your office feeling that you understand them feeling as though they've been heard they've been listened to and that you um, have an appreciation of what their problem is and that you are going to assist them in um, dealing with their problem or their matter. So those two ends, those bookcases of an interview structure I think are critically important. So let's have a look at the opening. Um, I always think it's good to break the ice, for example, put clients at ease. So when you are going to meet them, um, come in, introduce yourself. Very important to introduce yourself. So I would say, hello, um, Mr. Smith, I'm Jackie Jones. Um, please would you come with me into my office or whatever it might be, but introduce myself. It might be that um, you just break the ice. Um, discussion about well did you have any difficulty finding the office today or if it's been a very hot day how did you cope with the the heat isn't it you know it's sort of quite terrible or if it's been raining you know was did that in you know challenge you with getting to to the office today or it might even been there's been some significant sporting event um, that uh, you might want to um, break the ice and make a comment sometimes that um, has a two-edged sword you might say to the client oh what about the grand final on the weekend and they might look at you and say well I don't watch football but you might say oh well you know a lot of people did and it seems to be quite exciting and they move on to something else but the opening 
is really a way of, you know, sort of capturing that initial relationship with the client. Important to obtain the client's details um, so that um, you have in your file what are the ways that you can contact your client. So there'll be a telephone number, email, um, sometime, sometimes people like the old snail mail in the mail, the traditional mail. Ask a client um, what is the best form of contact for you. It's not uncommon, for example, I've got a number of clients who work um, but will use their personal email for their family law matter and there's understandable reasons for that. So again, make sure that you have an understanding of what um, what are their contact details? Also, how they want to be addressed. For example, it might be an elderly person. Now, if it's an elderly person, um, I tend to um, ask, um, do you mind if I, how would you prefer, would you prefer I call you Mr. Smith or would you prefer I call you Fred, for example? Um, I usually would start with an elderly person by giving them the respect of saying Mr. Smith, for example. Um, once you've been able to establish that opening, then what brings you here today? Give me a brief outline of what's concerning you. So giving them the open question for them to start talking about the information. Just want you to go back and think about what it's like when you go into a doctor's surgery, for example. You need to have an understanding of what it actually is all about. Um, you want them to be speaking to you in, in an effective way so that um, you know what it is they propose in language that you can understand. When clients come to see lawyers, um, it's not like seeing a doctor where they know they're going to have a Medicare rebate. People are concerned about costs. So your first appointment in your client interview is free. Tell the client, puts them at ease. Um, you will also tell them that um, what the costs are going to be and that they will be disclosed in the facts for your assessment if the matter then proceeds. So it might be a set fee if it's a transactional matter or it might be an hourly rate if it is some other form of matter. Now, if for example um, it's an hourly rate, you can say to the client, we will prepare an estimate of costs and send it out to you following this interview. You don't need to worry about costs for the client interview assessment. The most important thing you need to be aware of is that the first appointment is free um, and that you will be able to provide the client following the interview with a cost assessment. We're not expecting you to do the cost assessment, just to tell them in the interview that that is actually what's going to happen. Make sure that the client understands what confidentiality means. You understand what it means because you've been going to law school for a long time, but a client may not. And what's also very important is that a client has an understanding of what's going to happen in the interview. So it might be something along the lines of, um, I'm going to ask you to tell me why you're here. Um, I might need to ask some questions of you to gain a better understanding of your problem and then um, hopefully we're going to be able to work together to look at some options as to how to deal with that and then following that there may be some homework for you to do and some homework for me to do. So that's sort of getting all that um, aspect dealt with in that opening. It's a, it's, a, it's a brief part of it but it's a very important part. Then after you've done that opening and established the relationship with the client, it's really important for the client to then have the floor, so to speak. It's now the client's opportunity to do the talking. So in some ways, if you want to think of it, um, you're doing the talking in the opening because you're setting the parameters, you're describing the landscape, whatever metaphors or terminology you want to use, you're giving them an outline of what's going to happen in the interview. Then it'll be for the client to then give, um, do the talking and tell you what it is they're there for. So there's a bit of a snapshot there on slide seven, just to give you an uh, information, sort of guidance as to maybe giving them a lead in to get them talking. What is very important when a client is talking is the active listening component and go back to 
uh, lecture two when we talked about effective communication and problem solving. It is all about listening to what the client is saying, also thinking about what the client isn't saying. Allow the client to tell their story without unnecessary interruptions. This is a real challenge for some students in the client interview assessment. As soon as a client starts talking, they want to interject and start asking questions, funneling down for more information. It is much more effective to let that client speak for a couple of minutes. It might seem like an eternity, but it's actually probably only going to be a couple of minutes when they're going to give you a snapshot of the story. You're listening, you're taking notes, um, and you're thinking about what additional information you need to have a better understand their story. And that then comes to questioning techniques, expanding that information they need. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot behind questioning and slide 10 gives you an understanding of um, what it is, why we engage in questioning techniques, looking for the client's needs to ultimately have a detailed understanding of the problem. And there's a number of differing questioning techniques and they, they're on a number of slides starting at slide 11. The open, close, narrowing, clarifying, pathetic, hypothetical, neutral, scoop, leading, value, laden. So you can see that there's lots of information. And, and some of you may not have heard of these and some of you may um, be quite familiar with them. Um, but it's always good to come back and revisit them and, and make sure we touch base with the various questioning techniques. Lawyers are very good at closed, funneling, asking yes, no, um, questions. The more challenging we find are open. So why do you say that? Giving them the opportunity to actually explain. Empathetic is also one that some lawyers have great difficulty with. Reframing. This is one that's used frequently in negotiation. So there on slide 14, I had a terror, I had a car accident last week. I thought I was going to die. Now, if I hear a client say that, I'd say, so you're involved in a serious accident. Um, that must have been very frightening for you. Reframing it, making sure that you um, have a good understanding of what the client is saying. And the following slides give you some questioning examples on those differing questioning techniques. Now the sample of an interview is on slide 16 and 17 and I quite like this because it shows how we as lawyers like to funnel. So the lawyer, what brings you here today? Oh, I had a car accident last week. I thought I was going to die. Well, did your insurance cover the damage to the car? Lawyer's thinking, damage, personal injury, what it is? Yes, but lawyer interjects. Were you injured? Uh, I've, I have a stiff neck, so I went to physio, and I, I think it will clear up in a couple of weeks. Okay, so you may have a claim for damages. What does the client know about damages? Now tell me about the accident. Yeah, well, it happened at the intersection of, and the client talks about the accident. The lawyer, the lawyer then says, now go back to the intersection. Before you made that turn, take me step by step through what happened. The client then says, but I just want to make a will. I got such a fright, I thought I should get my affairs in order. So the lawyer was going down a whole different path because of the way they were controlling the interview. Let's have a look at a different approach on slide 18. What brings you here today? I had a car accident last week. I thought I was going to die. Well, that must have been very frightening. Sometimes it's okay just to stop, to pause. That must have been very frightening. Pause. Client looks. Oh, yes, it was. I thought about it later and I decided I'd better get my affairs in order. So what do you want to achieve today? I want you to make a will for me. So the client says, oh, I want you to make a will for me. Oh, okay, I can help with that. Are you also concerned about the car accident? Now that might be, that might be a different tone. It might just pull back and be a bit quieter. And the client says, no, I wasn't hurt. The insurance covered the damage. Well, I'm pleased to hear that you've got no injury and there's no issue with the insurance. And then moving on. So all about making the lawyer think about what the client's saying, what is the client's problem, and how you question and deal with for example, on that will. Um, I want to understand the situation when we discuss options for your legal problem so that you've asked the client, explain the importance of the relationship of, it might be their brother or their sister, and then on from there because that's in fact a legal and a non-legal issue. Explain it in legal principles and plain language. So this is a family law matter. The relevant law is the Family Law Act. Um, your matter deals with parenting 
a parenting matter. Uh, under the Act, the focus is on the best interests of the child. That's the paramount consideration. That's the only aspect that you will need to consider from a legal point of view. And you might then say, so as we're talking about this matter, I want you to keep focused on that underlying principle of best interests for the child. So being able to identify deficiencies in facts or information. I'll need further information about X, Y and Z, for example. So you'll see that um, on slide 21 and following, there's um, some information or some, not information, I'm sorry, some um, examples about how you can um, develop this type of discussion with the client. So you want to know if you can have your neighbour's tree cut down. I'll need to research the relevant law and you whatever that might be, what I need to find out is who can make an application to the court to have the tree cut down and what needs to be proved to the court for this to happen. I need you to tell me more about and what it might be. And then again, getting some more questions from the client so you're beginning to develop that legal and non-legal issue understanding as part of the theory development. But that can only happen once you have established what the matter's about, what the client's perception of the problem is, and that is critical in obtaining the story. Let the client speak, expand that information by questioning techniques, and then bring it all together in theory development, identifying the relevant area of law. You will be told the relevant type of matter in your client interview assessment um, and and then summarize that for the client but it is not an exercise on giving legal advice and you can see there from all the example questions that nothing's relating to the actual legal advice but rather expanding the information so the so the lawyer has a, an excellent understanding and appreciation of the legal and the non-legal issues for the client before they then springboard into the option development which I will discuss in the next module. Thank you, that's the end of this module.